Hello and welcome to the Pressed Up Podcast, Pressed Up Australia's weekly video game discussion podcast. I'm your host, you, and joined today by my fellow gamers and co-hosts, Kieran. Hello. Brody. Hello. James. Hello. And Shannon. Hello. On the show today, we're going to be talking about Chia, Netflix game, Starfield, and a Lego racing game. But first, I want to start with some rather sad news, and that is the unfortunate passing of the actor Lance Reddick. Um, we may all know him from starring in the John Wick franchise or the HBO series The Wire, um, but Lance Reddick also voiced Commander Zavala and Destiny in Silence in the uh, Horizon games. Brody, I might come to you first. I'm sure you were as sad as I was to hear uh, this news this week. Did you appreciate the gesture that Destiny players put together to commemorate his passing? Uh, yeah, I thought it was nice. Like uh, He obviously was very uh, connected to that community. He, I think I even read somewhere that he was like playing the game the night before he passed away, so like he, he really loved it. So... Um, yeah, like I thought it was a nice small thing that they did. I'm I'm sure Bungie, uh, they've already put out like statements this week, obviously, and I think they'll go on to commemorate him in another way. Like they've got a lot of yeah. avenues to do that. Um, so yeah, really sad. Uh, let's not uh, let, let's put some respect on Quantum Break as well, uh, in which he played Martin Hatch. Very underrated game. Uh, yeah, very sad. Very young too, sixty. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's what kind of caught me by such a surprise, especially with like John Wick 4 out this week as well. Um, yeah, it just kind of came as a real shock. Um, but I'm sure, yeah, as you said, um, Bungie will find a way to kind of commemorate him. And I do like that through his work, like his presence will kind of still be felt in such a way by so many people. Because, um, I mean, that character in particular, you interact with like somewhat frequently. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, that's kind of a cool thing about video games, I guess, as tragic as this all is. Um, Shannon, you and I are both big Horizon fans. How big a hole do you think this now kind of leaves in the series, given he was and was continuing to be such an important character? Yeah, um, I don't, haven't finished Forbidden West, but I think he does live through that spoiler alert. But, um, yeah, I think he was definitely, like, one of the 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 big parts of, of that franchise like in the original maybe even stood out more than than Aloy for me so it's a huge huge loss just yeah in every regard but yeah Horizon's definitely one for me not being a Destiny fan and not being into John Wick at all where I yeah that's where my my, my mind went to immediately mm. when I saw the news yeah such a phenomenal actor like such range I feel like he never really had the leading role necessarily mm. but um I saw him like play a really good bad guy, obviously a good, good guy too. Um, but was convincing and in either capacity. So yeah, real shame. Um, but we should crack on with the rest of the week's news and reviews. And Kieran, I want to come to you on that matter. You reviewed Chia, a cute looking indie game that's out now on PC, PS4 and PS5. How Mm. did you find the game? Um, yeah, Chia is really cool. It's, um, it's basically just like a little, I guess, like, abridged open-world adventure. Um, It's set on, like, a fictional set of islands that are loosely based on New Caledonia, which is where the developers are from. Um, So it's very steeped in, like, New New Caledonian culture, and they've really kind of put a lot of effort to bring that to the forefront, which is really cool. Um, And, like, I guess, like, I don't want to be too reductive in in saying it because it's definitely, like, praise, but it takes a lot of cues from, like, games like Breath of the Wild. Um, mm. where you've got this world that's kind of this this toy box of all these interlocking ideas. Um, you have a lot of freedom to just like explore and play with physics and all your different abilities and stuff. So like the big draw card in the game is uh, Chia, the main character, can do what's called a soul jump and basically like possess any animal, uh, a lot of the inanimate objects. Um, and that kind of becomes how you go, go about most of the puzzle solving um, and also most of the traversal. Uh, so, you know, if you, if you need to snip a rope or something, you can possess a nearby crab and you can use its pincers to like cut the rope. Um, if you need to get somewhere real quick, you don't want to walk or sail, you can possess a seagull and just kind of fly across and then jump back out and land. Um, it's, it's just like really good at giving you really, really fun tools just to get around. So it makes like exploring the world, not even just playing the the main quest lines or anything, but just getting around a lot of fun, which I thought was really cool. 
Um, the, Does like, that create some quite like meaningful challenges to solve, or like is it how That's... how frequently you asked to do that in the game? It sounds like the kind of thing it might be used kind of sparingly and not enough. But did you feel like it was in there? sufficiently yeah that's that's probably the only real sort of downside to it is like most of the mission design is quite basic it's it's usually just go here talk to this person or find this thing um so i think you know going through the the motions of the the main storyline although the narrative is really cool and it's really well put together um the the most fun is just when you when you're making your own fun um Mm. which it's like it's a shortish game i think it took me like seven or eight hours to get through i haven't 100 percent completed it um but you know it's it's free for playstation plus extra and deluxe members as of tonight or tuesday night whenever you're listening to this um so it's one it's one definitely worth giving a crack i think yeah do you think this would be brody's cup of tea i definitely think this would be a brody game is it one you've got your sights on brody uh, yeah, I think so, uh, when time permits, but definitely has that vibe of a Brody game, trademark. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty safe to bet that like uh, a cutesy indie game, I can account, count on you to play it. James, what about yourself, though? Like, you're done and dusted with Resident Evil 4 now. Would you jump in and give Chia a go? There's, like, so many other Resident Evil games that I can <laughs> play them, though. No. Um, yeah, we might have time. I'm playing, yeah, I, I'm just, like, cooling down at the moment. Um <laughs> and just relaxing, <laughs> doing nothing. But yeah, um, I've always got time for... I mean, a Breath of the Wild, like, I don't know if I'm, like, super keen for that, personally. But um, it has caught my eye every time it's been one of those, like, award shows or event shows that we've covered. So, yeah, yeah definitely give it a shot when I have a spare moment. I've kind of been playing so many, like, meaty games recently. I wouldn't mind, like, a short, sharp kind of game, but... Of course, that's like a day. A day I spend playing that is a day I'm not progressing through this mountain of games that are piling up in my back catalog. So it's a it's a tricky one. But I'm always making excuses. I need to find a way to stop. Um, it's been a little while since we spoke about Netflix's foray into games, uh, and I want to kind of touch on them a bit today. But I want to start with Zack Snyder, who revealed on the Nerd Queens podcast that he's helping with the development of an RPG of quote ridiculous scale. Um, to accompany his upcoming Netflix space opera, Rebel Moon, which admittedly I don't know a whole heap about. Uh, Brody, though, would you play a massive RPG game helmed by Zack Snyder? Does that sound like your cup of tea? No. If there's three (laughs) terms that you can throw together to make me just want to run as far away from something as possible, it's RPG, Ridiculous Scale, and Zack Snyder. So, uh, (laughs) like, look, I I didn't mind Zack Snyder's Justice League. I sat through four hours of that twice comfortably. Uh, But I think that was more the DC side of things. Um, Yeah, no. No, just stay away, Zack, please. Stay away. (laughs) Yeah, I do worry what he says about Ridiculous Scale. I mean, I guess, like, you kind of hype up movies a little bit differently than you maps might a game. So I wonder if there's just, like, a bit of a... A, a lost in translation sort of thing but yeah i mean you mentioned the Z- the snyder cut and if that's four hours i don't know if i want the director's cut of an rpg with uh with Zack snyder taking the lead um shannon sticking with netflix though they announced this week that they're planning to release 40 games this year um which is on top of i think a number of games have already uh, announced um subscribers can currently access a library of mobile games as it is they're obviously adding to that have you given the Netflix mobile games a go at all? Um, I did originally. What was that game that launched? Was it started with a P? Pinny, Pinny Poy or something? I'm probably getting that way wrong, <laughs> but I'm sure you know was what I'm like, talking about. Uh, it was no P or something. Pin P. Yeah, it was point, a developer. Or... Yeah, was it a developer game? Yeah, I played that, but I, I've kept an eye on it with, with like games like Immortality and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge launching it's i'm not a big mobile player in between like apple arcade and a few of the others um yeah I, i'm just not the type to jump into it but i think it's actually pretty cool after looking at it again like i could totally see any a number of netflix people sort of jumping in it's a little bit clunky i must say like even in the app on netflix like you have to search games and like look at the library like there's not a really nice section of games which maybe they'll add now that they've built it out a bit but for what's there like like i said immortality 
um, Teenage Mutant Ninja. Like there's some really good games that you can play for just being a Netflix subscriber, which I assume most people are. So, and then there's other, I think the most popular game they said is Too Hot to Handle, which Kieran is a big fan of. I know. <laughs> like I think, I, I think that just shows, right, that they're, they're striving for a different demographic. And I think like Stranger Things, like it's smart to, to release games that sit alongside these franchises that take the world by storm when they drop. Um, so it's a solid strategy and I feel like they're making a slow move into it, um, a slow but calculated move into it, I would say. Kieran, perhaps you then fall into the 1% of subscribers that play these games regularly. How do you think they make this successful and kind of grow that 1%? I... I, I'm definitely not part of that 1%. I very rarely play <laughs> games on my mobile. I've gotten back into Marvel Snap a little bit recently, but that's different. Uh -oh. um, I, I I think it's hard because like, I think about it in comparison to something like Amazon Prime, which is like a similar deal where you get like video streaming, but you also get like Amazon shopping stuff. You also get like Twitch stuff and PC games. And I don't, I don't think I know many people that kind of use that one subscription for all those things. It's, it's kind of one or the other. Um, and I think Netflix, like once they build out the library quite a bit more, can have that same sort of potential where they've got subscribers that are just there for the games or subscribers that, you know, are just there for the TV or whatever. Um, but I, I think it's, I think it's getting that library built up a bit more. And I think it's cool that like, they're trying to like, I know Shannon joked about too hot to handle, but I, it's cool that like, cause the Netflix games don't have any microtransactions or anything, right? Like they're all like yeah. premium games. Yeah. I, I think it's cool that they're sort of looking at a different audience, the audience that traditionally would be into like your candy crushes and, and mobile games like that. And actually give like, you know, giving them a, like a proper product, like mm. something that's just not there, not just there as a cash grab. But I think, I think they need to speak to those people a bit better. Yeah, I'm I just... kind of forget that it exists. Like, Shannon made the point of, like, it finding it on the app. I cracked the o app open because I had sworn there was a tab here. there or something. Yeah. But, yeah, Great I'm, games. like, kind of blown away. This follow-up to Valiant Hearts. Yeah. Ooh, like, yeah. you got bef that, uh, the game that I think Kieran reviewed on PSVR 2, Before Your Eyes is Before on Before Your there. Eyes, yeah. Yeah, that's another yeah. one. Yeah. Like, I was, I was actually, like, I'm like, shit, I want to play this game, but I don't want to buy a PSVR 2 for it. Uh, but now I can just play it on my phone. Like, I didn't even realize, so... Yeah, it's actually a good catalogue of games, like 12 minutes. So it's not the best game, but, you know, it's it's a fun distraction. I mean, considering what you might otherwise play on your phone, like it's... Mm, like Gubbins. <laughs> yeah, Sackboy oh, Ultimate I for however many hours I play Gubbins that game. is the best. <laughs> um, James, to rope you into the conversation, Netflix Vice President of External Games also suggested they were exploring the prospect of cloud gaming, but taking it slowly and learning. How... Do you think cloud gaming is progressing? Do you see it as having it further to go still before it can hit the mainstream? Um. Yes. No. Maybe. <laughs> the, <laughs> These Netflix the games, no, I should question. note, are a little bit different. Like you're downloading those on your phone, so this would be kind of a step further than Netflix would go. Yeah, I, I think I think it could easily be so, like I mean the barrier. Like as an example, I always think of stuff like say with Deathloop. Um, I know it's a really niche example, but like people who don't have a series X or a series S can play that on their Xbox one with cloud. Do you know what I mean? Like it opens mm. that up to a little bit. Um, I think like, it's hard to tell because like, I feel like here, like, even though it works and stuff, I haven't really found a need for it just yet. Um, and like the five G five G is good. It's more than good enough to run most games. Um, but yeah, like I, I can see it happening. I don't know if I could see it happening for like games like DMC um, or like Fighters or something, you know, that are a little bit more responsive. Mm. Um, like I could see it as like, I think I've said this before on the podcast as well, like you're at your mates or something and you just want to chuck on like Jackbox or something and that's on your Netflix. Um, like yeah, I can yeah. see that becoming something. I, um, I was going to say, like, a lot of these games, like um, Black Mirror, Bandersnatch, and, like, Immortality, I feel like those are the type of the games that would actually work quite well from the Immortality, cloud Immortality like, is a great fit, for sure, yeah. as well. Um, yeah, a lot of those, like, I guess just, like, narrative-based games, which I... I mean, I was going to say that's probably what Netflix people go to Netflix for, but lately, probably not. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I just... Like, do you know what I mean? Like, they're not, not so much game games, like, more just stories. Yeah, totally can, you, can you see them being competitive with Xbox in that capacity? Like, no. Is it that... No, I think okay. they have, like... They, <laughs> they, 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 no, no, they have a content delivery network to to be able to 
do it for sure. Like, I just don't mm. think they're going to be able to get like a slice of, especially like, I just think of, I feel like game pass is quite big now. Um, it's like broken beyond say like people like me who plays everything all the time. Like even like normie casual people, uh, have <laughs> game pass. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's a pretty regular thing. Um, but we'll have to wait and see, I guess. We will. As Maybe always. a Zack Snyder game will kick it all That's off like, Netflix. That, everything there. about that idea is just, like, <laughs> putrid to me. And, like, <laughs> I'm so sick of scale. Like, stop talking about scale. I'm over yeah. it. Like, there, I just want, like, modestly sized experiences from now on. <laughs> things. Yeah. It's all too much. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that would actually be a better kind of marketing move at this point. It's like, our game isn't 200 hours, it's just 20, and you're going to have a great time playing it. Like, that would that would be I uh, could s- immediately more talking, appealing to me. Talking about all that now, I can see value in getting games with celebrities in them on Netflix games as well. Like, I feel like that, that sure. once again, that audience crossover, say for, like, Hayden in Until Dawn... Um, or like the guy with the eyebrows in Little Hope, and like, do you know what I mean? Like all the, all those like <laughs> big ish name actors yeah. that are in like the Dark Pictures games and stuff. Like you could definitely have some kind of crossover there. Like yeah, imagine are, if you just finished watching Chernobyl, on Netflix, and then like Devil in Me comes up because Jesse Buckley's in it. I think her name is. No, um, right. Yeah, I don't know. I just think that would be a good way, I guess, to leverage it, and then just chuck Death Stranding in there for, to confuse everyone for fun. Yeah, yeah. Who's the eyebrows guy? It's like Will Poulter. I don't know. Will Poulter. Uh, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, that's probably his Yeah, name. I don't know his name. He's just the eyebrows guy from Maze Runner. He's from oh, Where the, the Millers. The Dark or Pictures. Meet the Millers. Oh, yeah. and Where the Millers. Yeah. 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 Netflix. Captain I think he's in the Galaxy as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what he's going to be in Guardians you, 3. One I of think. you, Akira knew what I was talking about, so. <laughs> one out of five isn't too bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's almost a pass. Well, guys. Starfield has been rated R18 here in Australia. Something I didn't see coming, but Shannon, it seems tied to be its high tied to its high impact drug use in the game. Does it strike you too as a surprise? I think so. Like I can't again. Like we're all over 18, and and something's not getting bad. And you're not really paying attention to it. But I, I feel like most like AAA games aren't aren't. R-rated, right? Like, they're aiming to go under that because it opens up a whole world of, like, marketing stuff and people being yeah. able to buy it from the shelf. So, it's... I don't know what to read into this in the sense that, like, I assume there's, yeah, that you get some positives from taking drugs, which is what landed Fallout, Fallout 3, 3 Hot Water... Yeah, originally. Yeah, um, it, it got banned originally. Yeah. Um, so, I assume it's it's... That so I can easily see how it's happened. I guess I'm more surprised or I'm more curious to know like if they're going to appeal it or if they're going to try and downgrade that given they've got five or six months or whatever it is until launch. Because I just feel like, yeah, from what I know about the R18 rating, like it's better than being banned, but you you want to try and avoid it where possible. So, yeah, yeah I am surprised. I'm, I'm sure it deters... Some people. I mean, I guess like the kind of gamers even that might fall between the 15 to 18 sort of age bracket that it's suddenly that much more awkward to buy. I mean, the fact of the matter is your parent and could come in with you and still get you the game. And it's on so Game it's not Pass, impossible. so I but, don't know what yeah. that looks like, but well, I assume yeah. you can get around right. it quite easily. GA5 didn't regulation. sell that many copies just selling to people over 18. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, exactly. It's hardly like, yeah. you know... An, inhibitor of sales yeah i might need to brush up on the exact like specifications around the classification system but i think anything tied with like incentives like drug use tied to incentives is still falls within the refuse classification like that can still get yeah you're right like effectively banned so i I might not be going that far but presumably there's still some serious enough drug taking that it warrants the r18 rating uh brody do you think there's room in bethesda softworks games to be a little bit grittier like would you welcome something that's kind of a bit darker and more adult yeah, look, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say as their stuff hasn't been adult already. I guess, but um, yeah, like I mean, Sally Fallout didn't have what was it, Medex, um, and I'm sure 
Skyrim had magic mushrooms you could trip on and have a great time. So, uh, as far as that's on the drug front, obviously, but, um, <laughs> yeah, look, uh, I'm more curious to see what they can do with this new, I think it's like creation too, like the new engine. I'm hoping like it will sort of move away from that jankier side of Bethesda as much as we all love it. I'm sure. Um, yeah. to create something that seems a bit more grounded, even though obviously it's going to be set in space. Um, so yeah, look, I'm always down for a gritty game. I love a bit of grit. I'd love like, um, the flesh system that we've spoken about a little bit recently kind of roped into it as well, rather than just kind of like the ragdoll physics that I very much kind of think about like playing Skyrim and, and whatnot. That could be cool. What about yourself, James? Are you still excited for Starfield? This doesn't change anything for you? Still excited. Implies that I was <laughs> excited before. No, um, doesn't, yeah. I, I have a feeling this is just a, like in Fallout 3, where you take, take it was Morphine, but they renamed it to Drug X or whatever. Um, like I think Drug X. said. But it was something <laughs> like that. But they, they censored that for like the whole world. That was a weird yeah. time. Um, but, I think it's something like that. I don't think it's like everyone's going to be shooting up heroin like as soon as you get on a ship and then like, and then you're like, wow, this is really cool. You're in and it's space. Like, well, Here's your needle. It's like yeah, Wolf of Wall Street, hope. but for heroin <laughs> in space or something. But like, I think like over, I, I just want to, like I said before, many times before, I just want to see like the core loop, like give me 30 minutes of footage of it or something so I yeah. can get a vibe because it's like a few months away, still don't have a vibe for it. It's right up there with Zelda for me. Um, I guess not until that July showcase, I think it was. June. Yeah. June the, showcase. The, the idea that it's three months away before you even see anything is like ridiculous, but that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. It'll come out But eventually. I'm sure it'll be worth the wait, right? It uh, always is. Fingers crossed. We'll be here to talk about it when it does, that's for sure. Uh, something else we'll talk about when it does come out, I'm sure, is this Lego racing game that's leaked and since been confirmed by Lego themselves. Uh, it's about to be revealed in the coming couple of days, but the leaks point to it being an arcade racer in the vein of a Mario Kart uh, that we know and love. Uh, Kieran, I might come to you first. I know you've got a fair few Lego sets. What does this news do for you? This news has me bricked up, Ewan. <laughs> I am... Um... <laughs> That's a bad um, thing, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I, I'll let you look it up. Um, I am a sucker for a kart Just racer. Imagining you're uh, constipated. No, <laughs> it's the opposite of that. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I um, yeah, no, I, I like a good kart racer, um, and I like playing my PlayStation. So I'll be happy for another like good kart racer on a console that's not a Nintendo console. Hopefully, it's good at least. Um, and I feel like Lego's got a lot of cool stuff to draw from in terms of like track designs and carts and characters and stuff. So that's the potential sounds really cool. Um, it's 2K, so I'm worried it's going to be stuffed with microtransactions for all the cool stuff. Um, but the potential's there. <laughs> such such little faith in 2K nowadays. It's a, a grim state of affairs. Uh, Shannon, does this strike you as something that would be up your alley? Kind of like it reminds me of like the Forza Horizon Lego racing expansion. Yeah, that, the, that just dabbled happened. in this before, wasn't right? it? Yeah, like, yeah, like that. That's the vibe I got from looking at it. I know it'll probably be more like a kart racer. Um, I'm skeptical because I think yeah, Kieran mentioned 2K, and I don't think they've done a racing game in a long, long time. Um, so that has me a little bit worried. And yeah, I think it's really hard to um rival mario kart like we've seen so many of these kart races come and go very quickly and i think lego like knowing that puts it a little bit further but i don't yeah it'll be interesting to see it'll do well it's lego I <clears throat> yeah i remember like lego races on the 64 and the mm. ps1 i get that vibe but um but then i was like oh 2k I'd they'll probably sell you like dlc by the brick like i'd each rather like, see like a um What's the multiverse as Lego Dimensions type of thing where it's like franchises? Oh. I feel like that would have a chance at like rivaling Mario Kart, but I don't think it's that from the leaks. It or doesn't be look surprised like it. if it's that. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's interesting. Warner, is it? Because that might also have a big thing to do with yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know how licenses fall at this point. But yeah, I think that that's the only thing that could get me really excited. I'm, I'm excited for whatever Lego do, to be honest. But 
Brody, rumors have circulated that Lego and 2K have struck a deal to make a range of sports games. Do you think Lego sports games more generally interest you? Does that sound like a good avenue to go with Lego, I suppose, as a property? Uh, look, there's... Go- I'm sorry. I'm, I can't move past the fact that <laughs> getting bricked up, which Kieran informs us, <clears throat> is to get an erection. Is somehow the opposite of being constipated. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need that explained. Like... At, it's like taking one bit no. from there to there. <laughs> I don't know. I tell you, if there was ever a moment to go over to YouTube and watch the video version of this podcast, it was A, to watch my face when I Googled it and realized what it meant, and then B, just to see the hand gestures that Kieran just made trying to explain how it was the opposite of being constipated. Anyway, um, yeah, look, I mean, kids will buy Lego stuff, won't they? So um, for any kid that's not buying NBA 2K it's not or even like the wwe yeah. games yeah well that's right that, like it's going to be an avenue for them to get into those things i suppose but uh would it interest me specifically no um does an arcade racer like mario kart interest me a little bit did you said forza did lego did they do lego or was it hot wheels i think they've done both been lego yeah i think they do i that? think I hot think wheels like just happened. champions like tie-in thing yeah okay i but i could could be wrong um, yeah, that's Horizon 4. Yeah. For, for the Lego. Yeah, okay. There, yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, hmm. James, do you Ooh. see Lego sports titles working the same way or as well as, like, say, Mario or Sonic have kind of done sports titles in the past? Does it have the better, same sort of you? appeal? Um, I think Lego has a big, like, brand presence, um, like, throughout the world. Like, it, it's... Mm. It's so popular. Like, there's there's stores. There's physical Lego stores, obviously. <laughs> I, like, I know there's Nintendo stores too. Like, one. Like, maybe two in the world. Yeah. But, like, I feel like Lego as a whole. Now, does that pull people to play games, though? Like, I don't really... I don't know if everyone's going to go out and buy a console to play Lego races because they love Lego. I think probably the audience who likes Lego like to physically touch it and build it. <laughs> but just... um, Yeah, I don't think you're ever going to get something... Yeah, I don't. I don't think it would pull me in. Like as an example, like I hate kart races. I think they're like really shit because I'm really bad at them. So they must be, <laughs> so they must be shit, um, obviously. Um, but like, like the idea of a Lego one doesn't pull me in any more than a Mario one does. So personally, do you reckon they'll go like, like the? Um, I think there's potential in like the memification of it all. If you can build shit and then like, do you know what I mean? Like build this most like, this like crazy looking player or vehicle or something um that's what i was gonna say do you reckon they'll go like like nuts and bolts nuts and bolts yeah yeah. similar yeah that game was like shit but so ahead of its time in so many ways like it's really a two-sided coin (laughs) tears of the kingdom's taking ideas from nuts and bolts isn't it so obviously it was i mean i wouldn't know because there's been 40 trailers but they haven't told me anything but (laughs) um back to lego (laughs) yes yui i think there is definitely a market for i mean lego world's was basically Lego Minecraft. Um, didn't sell as many units as Minecraft, I don't think, but I mean, still has a, games have, so. a juicy follow. Yes, that's correct. Lego GDA, do that next, see how it goes. <laughs> I mean, they did kind of, I guess, with Lego City. But yeah. You know I mean. Yeah. I, I think what I kind of struggle with is like, I guess when I think sports, I think round balls, and that's hard to do in Lego. Like, I, I don't know, round. just like it can be of, like they have round Lego. Maybe that's not very creative of me. It can be round ish, round ish. Yeah, I don't know. Um, well, the one thing that I think that does like lend itself quite well though is like because it is about kind of construction and making things. Like if it's a cart racer, like is there a track builder in there? What kind of thing does that look like? Because that's where I think an arcade racer can become a lot of fun and can do weird and wonderful things. Um, but yeah, we'll hear about more about this in the coming days. Chances are by the time you're listening to the podcast, we know more about it as well. So eager to see what it materializes to be. Um, but before we move into what the wiki, I do have a rapid fire question for you all. And James, you completed Resident Evil four, uh, four times in the past week, I believe it is four, four times, um, which I think is mental, but to acknowledge your valiant effort, I want today's rapid fire question to be. What game have you played the most times? So this is start to finish. What game have you played through the most times? Shannon looks deep in thought. So I might come Kieran's way, seeing as this question was his suggestion. 
I I want to say it's Final Fantasy VIII, but it could also be Spyro Three: Year of the Dragon, because oh. I didn't have a memory card when I got that game, so I had to play it all the way through every time. Ah, uh, wasn't necessarily by choice. <laughs> I love that, Brody. You look deep in thought too. What would be your answer? Um, well, games used to be a lot shorter back in the day, so my answer would probably be Aladdin on the Super Nintendo. Okay, not yeah. Play the still shit out How of many it. times do you the think fact you that you could finish that? it is impressive? Yeah, oh, yeah, I used to speed run it, <laughs> like not <laughs> professionally, but uh, you know, my own times. Um, like if it was a more modern game, like maybe the first Bioshock, I played that a lot. Nice, Shannon. Yeah. Um, I would say like most time played with a game is Virtua Tennis on the Vita that I can remember, but probably like Super Mario Bros. Three. Like if I'm thinking back, like start to finish. Um, I was thinking more recent, but then when Brody mentioned like Nez, Nez, like it definitely yeah was back when I was younger playing the same games over and over and over again. It's very rare that I replay a game, but I think I probably, and to no one's surprise, it'd be The Last of Us, seeing as I've played through the original. I don't think I played right the way through the remaster, but then I did the remake, so... It would probably be that. Maybe close Ready to, to go again. Am Bible I right? War. I've played through that a couple of times too. James? It's just so well paced. Really lends itself to <laughs> lots of replays. <laughs> um, uh, mine is either Resi, the first one, like the remake. Uh, every time Capcom has released it on something, I've finished it like five times. Um, so it's so at least yearly 15. Then. At least 15. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and then the first Deus Ex from the year 2000. Because it oh, used wow. to be the only game that ran on my computer, so I would right. boot that up if I didn't want to um, play anything else. And I thought like your top five ever. was all going to be like Resident Evil games. I'm no, surprised to like, see anything else all, in the mix. They're not all super replayable, so much to everyone's surprise, maybe. Um, but yeah, no, it's probably that one, Resi One or Deus Ex One. Lovely. Well, ooh. did He's we just back. lose? Gonna refresh. Brody? Brody okay. didn't like that. This edit should be interesting. All right, let's roll right into What the Wiki, the Press Start podcast game show, where the previous week's winner reads part of a Wikipedia page for an unknown game, and we, the contestants, must guess the game. A point is awarded for each correct guess, and the round ends after one person scores two points uh currently tied in first place it's a three-way tie between myself james and brody all with seven points and shannon and kieran just behind with five points apiece still no one with nil poire we need to just rope someone into the show one week just so we can not let them get any points and sit still on manage to say it every week so I, I, I try very hard we'll hit up um Steven. As last week's winner, I am in the hosting chair this week. So, contestants, if you're ready, I will read you out the first game. Mm. Let's go. Do it. <laughs> Just a stun silence. The game is a platform game in which players control a small, dark red, cube-shaped character who must save his cube-shaped, heavily bandaged James. girlfriend, James. Is it... Oh, shit. Is it Meat Boy? It is Super not Meat Boy, Meat Boy James. Oh. No. Can I go again? <laughs> <Just> so- no. <laughs> You've got a little bit more of the paragraph still to hear. Yeah, fine. The game is divided into chapters, which together contain over 300 levels. Players Shannon. attempt to reach Shannon. Super Meat Boy Forever. It is not Super Meat Boy Brody. Forever. No, <laughs> Brody. I've only heard the last bit about 300 levels, but uh, is it N+. plus? It is not N+. Plus. No. God, this is infuriating. Okay. Um, Kieran. The player ca- Kieran. Is it just Super Meat Boy? It is just Super Meat Boy. Well done. <laughs> I, I feel like James should have got that. But, you know, I feel like we'll... I said that, but that's fine. You said Meat Boy. I feel like I said Super Meat Boy, but it's mm. okay. Uh, I feel like I, I don't think you, I don't think you did, but I would have given you the point anyway, James. Uh, it's just fine. Well, no, Everyone Meat Boy is the original. Not Super Meat Boy points, was the so one after. On. Technically, <laughs> I did say Super Meat Boy. You could have just awarded me <laughs> that. <laughs> I didn't cut you off for a reason, Shannon. I, I can see you're about to say something else. <laughs> everyone who mentioned meat should get a point. <laughs> 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 I should win yeah. the whole year by In default. In that case, that'd be points every week, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, game number two. Karen moving up to six points. 
The game can uh, sorry, the game's gameplay consists of a first-person journey through an interactive world. Players can interact with specific objects on some screens by clicking or dragging them. The player moves by clicking on locations shown on the screen. The scene then crossfades into another frame and the player can explore a new area. The game has an optional zip feature to assist in rapidly crossing areas already explored. When a lightning bolt cursor appears, players can click and skip several frames to another location. While this provides a rapid method of travel, it can also cause players to miss important items and clues. To complete the game, the player must fully explore the titular island. There Kieran. the player... Karen. I'm just going to guess, sweep. is it missed? It is missed. Well done, Karen. Clean sweep. And he wow. joins Brody, James, and myself. Um, seven. <laughs> it's a messy sweep. It was a meat, it was a meat yeah. sweep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, I'm super stoked with how this scoring is working. Not going to lie. We're all very tight-knit at the top there. And I think it'd still happen. Albeit it is still early in the season. James is shaking his head. I take it he's not thrilled with the new scoring. Well, I won every other time, but it's fine. (laughs) (laughs) And with that, let's bring an end to what was this week's episode of the Press Start Podcast. Subscribe to us on Listener or the podcast service of your choice. Follow us at press.au and visit the site at pressstart.com.au. We've been joined today by Shannon. You can follow me at shancake underscore on Twitter. James... Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at, at jams, A-T-J-A-M-Z. We also had Kieran. I am on Twitter at H-A-S-H underscore B-R-A-U-N. And Brody. Uh, yep, thanks. You can follow me on most things at Brody underscore D-G. And I've been your host, Ewan Roxbury. You can follow me on Twitter at Ewan underscore Roxbury. Thanks again for tuning in. And until next time, happy gaming. Bye. 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 <laughs>